Kate, then you had a five minutes, you know, a couple minutes into the third quarter, and then mm -hmm. some seemed to mm -hmm. unleash something. Yeah. What happened there? I think just, the, you know, playing a little faster in transition. I think when I can get the rebounds and go and transition, it's really good for us. Um, you know, when I can get the ball in my hands more as the one, I think I'm a little more successful at times. Um, but yeah, definitely had a little, a little bit of a slow start, but you know, you're going to have times that, that happens, but I'm, I'm proud of my resiliency. I thought I came back and played a really good second half. Um, you know, was able to take care of the ball. For the most part, we all were able to take care of the ball. You know, 11 turnovers is really good. We'll take that. Um, uh, but our, our problem was offensive rebounding. You know, they they kind of killed us on the glass. I think they had 21 points on 17 rebounds. So um, that's tough. But you know, that's that's the game right there. So it, it just it seemed like I don't want to say like the, the Iowa game came out, but you know. Mm -hmm. like, you were ready, wanted the ball, you were going to do something. Mm -hmm. Most people in the arena said, all right, it's going to go through the game this time, just going to make a play. Mm -hmm. did, did you feel like that during that stretch? Yeah, I think for sure. I think it's a process of getting there to be able to do that the whole game and trying to navigate that with my teammates. And um, it's still a process of learning of like, when to be assertive and you know sometimes it's hard when you start off a little bit cold. Like, you know, you kind of just got to take what the defense gives you and get, get an easier one. But um, for sure, I think that's when I'm at my best is being a little bit more aggressive and creating my shot. Uh, I was able to create a couple threes there that kind of got me going. Uh, I was able to find some like, Temi running the floor a few times. So, um, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, the more I can play with more pace, that's when I'm definitely more successful. Kaylin, uh, today was the first time since 2022 that uh, Seattle sold out the arena. Mm -hmm. uh, can you put into words how you feel to have 18,000 people watching it's pretty incredible that crowd in the environment was great like just looking around like just like a sea of people on both sides behind the baskets um and it was a great game uh, obviously i would have loved if we would have won but um you know i hope these fans continue to still show up for you know seattle they've got a great team um you know hopefully when we come back here they'll be here and um it's so fun playing in front of those environments whether they're screaming when you're trying to make pressure free throws at the end of the game or whether they're cheering for you like you know, those are the environments that we want to play in across the league. So um, definitely special. I believe it was uh, earlier today that you said that you want to keep on inspiring young girls and mm -hmm. boys to, to use basketball as an outlet. Mm -hmm. uh, data says that more than 200, there's an, been an increase of more than 200% of girls between 12 and 17 watching the WNBA this mm -hmm. year. What are your thoughts? That's cool. Um, that's awesome. And, you know, the more... The more accessible we can make the league to, you know, young girls, young boys, you know, whoever it is, more accessible to the entire world. I think that's only going to help it grow. So um, that's amazing. Uh, you know, I think this this year is probably the most they've had games on national television, whether it's, you know, ESPN or you go down the list of whatever channel it is, and um, that's only going to give more access to people to watch these teams and watch these amazing players. Yeah, the final minute kind of loud to us. Yeah, it's a lot going on. So what did sure. A lot of reviews. I thought the, I thought, the jump ball call was interesting in front of our bench. Like I think you just got to make a call one way or the other. So then we have to waste our challenge to try to get the ball because you don't know if you're going to get the jump ball. Um, I thought that was interesting. Um, and obviously with the new rules of the reset, where you're not really getting a timeout, kind of blurs the lines, especially when they go down and they challenged the play but didn't lose a timeout because they were successful. So it's just, it's sometimes it's just hard to kind of follow what all is, is happening. So credit to the refs for keeping all that straight. Um, but, you know, obviously Jewel missing that free throw is kind of what gave us a little bit of life in the game. Really, she makes that. The game's probably over. I think it's a four-point game at that point. And then they foul up three, which you should probably foul up three with 10 seconds to go. We make both. And then, um, you know, we were able to get a deflection and steal and really give ourselves a chance. You know, you couldn't have asked for us to really kind of put ourselves in a little bit better of a position down the stretch considering the circumstances, but um, it's probably the longest minute of a basketball game I've been a part of in quite some time. So uh, it's, it's, it was, I mean, we definitely gave ourselves a chance, but at the same time, there was some little things that we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah, ankle's good. It was a little, a little sore when we first got going, but once you get into the flow of things, it loosens up a little bit. Can you take confidence out of the last couple of games or is coming that close too frustrating to do that? I think you can, but at the same time, like, 
these two definitely hurt the most. Like we're what uh, six points away from being two and three instead of zero and five. Like I don't remember what we lost to Connecticut by, but like we're just like it's just that close. And there's so many instances of going back and watching the film of like little things that you can easily fix and clean up that um, would go a really long way, and possibly it wouldn't even come down to to one possession. So. Um, I think you have to find confidence in that, especially, you know, at this point being 0 and 5, like if you just, you know, get upset by it, I, I don't think that's going to be too beneficial for us. And obviously we have two more games on this road trip and um, you got to find a way to continue to be positive and continue to feel uh, motivated by, um, you know, what we did out there tonight. I thought, you know, there was some really good stuff, um, you know, it's, you're never happy to lose. Like it's not fun, um, but at the same time, like, I don't know. I think there's just there's just a lot of things to, to build on it. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to just be as positive as possible, continue to learn, continue to stack days. And um, I know our first win will be right around the corner. Um, what are some of those like, little things you said that shot yourself in the foot? Well, I think the first four games turnovers was a huge problem. I think offensive rebounding has been a big problem for us. I think transition defense. I thought transition defense was a little bit better tonight. I thought we did a good job. Um, I thought, you know, obviously Jewel's amazing and, you know, she's going to do what she does. You know, there's only so much you can do. Um, I thought our traps and our rotations when we started to trap her weren't very clean. And, like, a lot of the time she was still able to split us in the trap and get downhill. Um, that can't happen in a trap because then you're playing basically three on five at that point. Um, but, I mean, it's hard when two players combine for 54 points on, you know, really good shooting. So, um I think just better team defense, better rotations. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of little things that, you know, go a long way.